Welcome to Cannabis Investing Newsletter. I'm D.H. Taylor. Got a real busy schedule today. Wanted to break down some of the things I've got going on. I'm putting up three videos today. First, I'm looking at a company that's doing a lot of M&A activity, and I want to point out three different companies that may see some activity based on that. If this happens, if you were to get involved in these stocks and this company did go ahead and acquire these, there's probably some premium involved there. We just saw Sundial pick up Inner Spirit. There are three other companies that Sundial probably has on its radar, have already started investing in, and at some point may pick up the entire company. Sundial sitting on a quite a large sum of cash. They're in getting involved in M&A activity. And these three companies, I want to highlight them and show you why, A, they may be solid investments on their own, B, are probably going to picked up, be picked up at a premium. These are opportunities you probably don't want to miss out on. These are three stocks that are definitely should be on your radar. Let's take a look. Real briefly, let's take a look at some of the uh, essentials on Sundow. Um, They've got about $750 million in cash. I think it's it depends on the day of the week. Maybe about $725 is what they reported, but that we've seen some price movements in some of the stocks they've uh, had. So about $750 in cash. Um, they recently inv invested $22 million into Indiva. Indiva is a company I like a lot. Their metrics are just starting to show up. They're seeing some quarter-over-quarter quarter increases in revenue growth that are really impressive. But here's the really impressive uh, data point on these guys. In Western Canada, they have 50% of the edibles sales. Um, now, Western Canada, of course, is not exactly the biggest portion of Canada. Most Canadians live uh, apparently within 50 to 75 miles of the U.S. border, and a vast majority live on the East Coast. Uh, Indiva has, of course, their operations over on the west coast think british columbia um and uh, calgary sorry um that those particular areas nonetheless 50 uh, 50 percent of the edible market that's huge now indiva will have access to some 100 plus dispensaries throughout canada including the east coast this is a huge move so given their relationship, the $22 million investment that uh, Sundial had put into Indiva, I'm thinking that they're going to expand rapidly. So this is a company that you're going to want to look at. I've just gotten some recent updates on there. I have looked at Indiva before. I'm going to hit them again this week because I think this is a company that's going to be in play here real soon. So I am going to hit this stock. Um, so there's the first company, Indiva. Another company, Valance. Now I just uh, did an analysis on Valance. I think it was last week. And as I was doing it, their stock just kept going higher and higher and higher. No sooner did I finish the analysis that we got a news update as to why that was happening. Sundial had moved their uh, ownership stake from about 7.2% all the way up to about 10, 10.1% of the total company. You don't, you're not required to report this information per se, but they did. And you, you really don't need to mention that until you hit like the 13%. They still did that. They announced it. Nonetheless, if you look at the stock price, the movement uh, that we saw during that period of time, it was as sloppy as it gets. They started out, I think, at about a buck 40. And I'm talking uh, Valens on the OTC prices for our Canadian friends up north. Started about a buck 40 and pushed it over, I think, up to about 330, 340 per share in about two months period of time. This was pretty sloppy. Um, Sundial has never been known to uh, do solid, awesome numbers. Nonetheless, Valens is an interesting company. They are a white label producer. So this would be an interesting company for Sundial to own. As white label, they don't really, uh, Valens doesn't really have a, a, uh, premium branding per se. What they do is they do the dirty work for all the other companies. On the one hand, your margins are going to be a little less, but you don't have to worry about marketing things like this. All you have to do is supply product for, uh, your, your customers. Now they're going to be producing as a white label. They'll start from concept to finished product 
packaged, whatever, shipped to dispensaries, all the dirty work. So someone can actually start a manufacturing company, start a manufacturing company by contacting Valens and saying, listen, uh, produce this product for us. We want like an edible cookie or, or a vape, whatever. And Valens will do all that for them. And then this company, all they become is a marketing company. That's where the margins are. So for Sundial to have control of this company, that's very interesting. They have 10%. Why not the other 90? That's something that could be in the works right now as we speak. This sounds like the late 1980s all over again with the merger acquisitions that went uh, was going crazy back in the 80s. This is something that they Sundown could easily be turning to Valens and saying, listen, we'll just take the whole thing. There will be more premium. I When I did my analysis on Valens, over, say, the course of maybe 18 to 24 months to 30 months out, I saw a lot of potential for appreciation. So if you look at this company from a 12 to 24 month standpoint, you, there is a lot of uh, growth potential in the stock. Given that, your downside is very minimal uh, when you look at the charts and things like this. Long term, I think there's a lot of play there. The next thing is, of course, Inner Spirit. Now, Inner Spirit has an, a way into, uh, they have an agreement with a company called Oxley. A lot of people don't like Oxley. Okay, Oxley's numbers are becoming impressive. I get that maybe six to nine to 12 months ago, you sat there and said, Oxley, no, don't think so. They're now producing 14 or selling 14% of all cannabis 2.0 in Canada. What's not to love about that? Their numbers are getting there. They have an agreement with Inner Spirit, and my understanding is that it is only the corporate-owned um, uh, dispensaries within Inner Spirit that, that there is that agreement with. But they also sell 14% of all cannabis 2.0 in Canada. You're looking at a company that has some 100 dispensaries. Why not spread that out across the board? If you're that good, if your product is that good, why not uh, sell it in all the stores. There may be some overlap with dispensaries down the street, things like this that prevent them from doing that. That's not something I'm certain about. Nonetheless, at 14% market share cannabis 2.0 in Canada, they have a way in with, uh, Sundial does have a way in with Oxley. Why not go ahead and pick up the whole company? So now I want to break down some of these stocks for you. Let's first take a look at Indiva. Indiva just printed 5.8 million. This is up from about 2.3 million. Expectations that there's continued growth. Again, if they do get to dis, uh, dispense their products throughout um, all of Inner Spirit, if they do get that agreement and get into the, that area, um, this is going to be huge opportunity of growth. If you're selling 50% of edibles on the western canada which granted is a smaller population with smaller opportunities uh getting into the east coast where inner spirit is the, the revenue is going to go through the roof and this is important because these guys are just starting to put some things together um they do have a future guidance of about 6.5 million i think in the next uh quarter um i'm trying to figure out if that's 100 percent accurate and how that uh, pulls through nonetheless we are going to be seeing continued growth um, as I mentioned, 50% edibles in Western Canada, their deal with Sundial was a $22 million deal. Uh, that cash went to Indiva. So they do own a percentage of that. Um, they, given that they have plenty of cash on hand, something that's important. Here's a look at their chart, uh, over the past couple of, well, about a year now, it looks like not a whole lot of movement. This is one of those stocks that I think that eventually will be taking off. We have seen some softness in the cannabis sector, um, and I do expect that to continue slightly. Some of the stocks that I'm looking at, I'd say go ahead and pull the trigger. It's all about yield. Ask a simple question. If this stock is going to five bucks and you pick it up at 35 cents, you did pretty well, right? Well, what if it went up to, uh, what if it still went to five dollars, but you picked it up at 32 and a half? You're not necessarily legend at that point. There's a saying that we have in the markets, um, trying to catch falling daggers 
And the idea is you can't necessarily get the absolute best price all the time. That if you were to commit to a stock like this based on its fundamentals, based on its long-term proje projections, if it does dip below the levels that you're looking at, all you're dealing with at that point is yield. Did you get the highest possible yield you can? You will never get the highest possible yield you can. You may get lucky once, but in the middle, in the meantime, don't miss out on an opportunity trying to squeeze out that last penny and a half or something like this. So this is a stock that I think at this price is probably good to go. You and we may see a dip back down to 25 cents or so. So maybe scale in, put in 50% now, 25% below, and another 25% below that price and move forward. Some look at some of the numbers, revenues. Here's what the revenue growth looks like. Um, as you can see, their revenues are continually moving higher. Gross margins, still a work in progress. I think they finished up 15%, 14, 14 to 16%, depending on the um, exchange rate that you're using. Um, I take Canadian numbers and I convert it. And then sometimes my numbers don't jive with other uh, financial institutions out there. We all do the same thing. We all take the Canadian numbers and convert it. Well, what day did you convert it? So I, I get questions every once in a while. I just got an email last week. Someone asked, hey, why aren't your numbers exactly the same? It's the conversion rate. Not a big deal. You're looking at a ballpark. As we get closer and closer to uh, profitability, say in a year, year and a half to two years, I'm going to continually look at every one of these companies as I'm doing. And the minutia that I'm looking at is going to get a little more narrow and narrow and narrow. Right now, we're looking at 9 to 12 to 18 month projections. So we can be wrong plus or minus 2.5%, 5%. There's really not going to be that much of an outcome uh, change. As we get closer and closer to projections and we can narrow things down, you're going to see me get a little more detailed as I move forward. So this is a good foundation to start with and then to move forward. Um, nonetheless, 15% is pretty bad. Uh, but we're looking at continued revenue growth, so that should improve significantly. Uh, and operating efficiencies, they've done a pretty decent job. Their operating efficiencies, as revenue continues to move higher, you're going to see their oper operating efficiencies, their cost basis continue to improve. So we're looking at, at 46.5%, you're looking at you know a 10% move. Should they hit the 65 to say 75 on the next quarter, these guys will be, uh, their total operating costs will be in line with some of the better companies. So uh, I see this as a, as a positive. Next company up, Valance. Again, I just did some due diligence on them, uh, what, about two weeks ago, 10 days ago or something like that. VLNCF uh, on the U.S. exchange, OTC, and then VLNS up in Canada. Their latest revenue was about $15 million. Um, As I mentioned, white label company, that's their, sort of their kind of thing. Um, I'm not overwhelmingly in love with the concept of white level manufacturers because these guys do all the dirty work their margins are never going to be really that high comparatively that's not to say that these guys are simply not going to overwhelm the market with a, a significant amount of revenue growth and that's exactly what they have lined up is revenue growth and i have the projections for you so what they're lacking in say gross margins they make up for in revenue growth the other thing is they don't have to deal with um sales uh in the sense of marketing to directly to customers and things like this so there's some pluses and minuses and even with um inner spirit sundial's acquisition of that Inner Spirit is a uh, predominantly a um, uh, franchise-based dispensary system. So, uh, and I think Inner Spirit only has like 10 to 15 corporate owned out of about 100. Um, to give you an idea, their margins themselves are not going to be as high as the next company simply because uh, you've got to split that margin with your dispensaries uh, or the franchisees, I should say. Given that, there's some pluses and minuses to that. Valance or Inner Spirit in that particular sense does not have to deal with all the operating costs of running a dispensary right there. They just supply it to the dispensary. So there are pluses and minuses to that. Nonetheless, um, 
Sundial has been investing in companies where their margins are not exactly going to be the highest, which is interesting, but these are not bad companies at all. These companies, each of them, Valens and Inner Spirit, are going to produce very high revenue rates. So, uh, moving on, let's see. The, again, from a white label manufacturing perspective, they focus on all the aspects of it, getting the product um, from manufacturing into package and then dispensing so this takes a lot of uh, sort of burden off of a startup company who can walk up to the valance company and say i want a cannabis company and they can the uh, valance will be able to lay out a lot of information for them here's where their charts done and you can see starting in march when um they were being acquired the the move from seven seven percent it was about seven two percent Point two percent all the way up to about 10% ownership from Sundial into Valens. You can see that move. I don't know why they were in such a rush to buy such so much in such a short period of time and push the stock up as much as they did. To me, that's kind of sloppy, but whatever their modest operandi was, this is how it played out. Push the stock up. Interestingly, and I just sent a tweet out to uh, my followers on Twitter. I hadn't heard any news as to why... Uh, after the acquisition of these shares and the announcement of it, the stock basically collapsed from about three or buck thirty-five all the way down to um, I'm sorry, about three thirty-five all the way down to about a buck thirty, and then it popped right back up. I've not heard any reason as to why. Uh, I would expect that there's no more um, big push at this time. Valens may see some more purchasing by. Uh, sundial in the coming months you might want to try and pick the bottom of this because i believe that this stock is moving up significantly and at the same time you probably have the opportunity to catch a ride off of sundial as they uh, acquire more of the company should they do so revenues on uh valens you know they're starting to push their revenues back upwards but if you look at this, this is current revenue. Let's move forward real quick. Projected revenue. They are going to print some decent numbers. And even the year after this, I have some sort of my own future projections. Um, this is a company that's going to grow significantly. There's a lot of large players, hedge funds um, involved in this. They get a lot of coverage. This is a company that... I believe simply because of the coverage, their stock's going to move higher anyway. And should they hit these revenue projections, which they're already on track, this is going to push the stock. Um, going forward, margins, as I mentioned, not exactly the best in the industry. They should push up to about 50%. Uh, that will help their bottom line. And then this company kind of becomes a low low grade sort of cash cow if you will operating efficiencies here's a metric that they still need a lot of uh, improvement but when you look at their total operating costs today versus their future revenues this not, this metric improves significantly over the course of the next three quarters for the year oxley the third that i'm looking at um CBWTF on the OTC, uh, XLY up in Canada. They printed uh, 14 mil, mil on their latest revenue. Um, this was a 50% Q over Q increase for the quarter. Here's their stock, kind of flat. Um, so you're not really looking at a major player, but again, they have that in on Inner Spirit. Sundial now owns Inner Spirit. So they may very easily be uh, approached again and say, listen, this initial deal where you're distrib distributing your products only within our stores that are corporate owned, let's do this store uh, company wide. So this gives Sundial sort of that uh, introduction. They may be interested in, in acquiring this company. Sundial is they're expanding and so this might be a company that they're looking at 
Um, again, they mentioned they are the number one company for cannabis 2.0, having 14% of market share. That's huge. Uh, let's see that spread out all throughout all those 100 stores. Should that be allowed? And revenues, I'm sure, are going to head higher. Nonetheless, this is what their revenue picture looks like, and it's impressive. It's can, going to continue to move upwards. So even without um, any kind of acquisition, I could see this stock moving higher. Uh, margins. Margins are still s sort of getting there. As revenues increase, gross margins with economies of scale and productivity gains should incrementally move higher and higher we're looking between 55 and 65 at some point i'm not sure where that metric is where with their uh revenues they start hitting that kind of gross margins you know you're looking at marginal profits every new every new widget that they make how does that increase their gross margin picture we don't quite know that data right at this point as I mentioned, I see these companies as being in play. I think there's going to be some activity. It's not 100% certain, but when you look at these companies individually, each one could be a potential investment regardless. Then, should Sundial pull another Valens and get real sloppy, there's some premium involved here. They just acquired Inner Spirit. There was premium involved there. If you look at these pieces in the sort of the introductions, like Oxley, you know, there's just an agreement there, but nonetheless, it's not necessarily a big agreement. Sundial could easily be talking to them right now and saying, listen, let's go bigger and let's partner up. Maybe there's a, a stock acquisition or something like that in the works. I believe these three companies could see some play uh, coming from Sundial. And I don't see any other companies on the horizon that could get involved in this. Given that Sundial is becoming a player, they certainly uh, solidified that with their inner spirit acquisition just, what, about two weeks ago. So I'm going to continue to kind of bring this information out to you guys. If I see stuff like this, I'm going to try and uh, put a video out. Hopefully once a week I can put something like this out there. Um, I've got a real busy schedule today. I've got two more videos to do. So uh, plus I got to go to a junkyard to pick up a couple more parts for, oh, the joys of owning a 1998 Land Rover. So I'm going to get these two, uh, this video up and another one up, and then I got to take a quick break, lunch break down at the junkyard, then come back. I am actually analyzing Sundial itself. I'm going to break that down today. Given all the information, all these pieces, I want to look, take a good hard look at Sundial's numbers. So I'll get that up for you today. I want to say thanks for all those subscribers. Um, if you've not been involved, there's a free email newsletter. I send out the email. There's a quick breakdown as to what company I looked at for the day. Also, what my economic slash kind of cannabis thing that's going on. So there's usually two videos in there, uh, a link to my articles. So the free email newsletter kind of keeps you abreast as to kind of headlines, things like this. The numbers that I'm, uh, my subscriber rate numbers are really climbing quickly. So I want to say thanks to all those who, uh, who've been coming along. I really appreciate the support. Um, for those who were really interested, my website, uh, $5 gets you full access to the entire website, including the top picks. Uh, again, numbers, over the weekend just really popped up higher and I can't say thank you enough. It's really kind of cool. I get a lot of emails from people just for no other reason than to send me an email saying, you know what? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the work. And I love those emails. Thank you so much for sending them. I got uh, two today uh, just like that. I usually typically get like one every once in a while, like one every day or something like this, but I got two this morning and they were really great emails. So thanks again. I'm DH Taylor. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.